and welcome to Politics Nation. And also with us, author and host of All In, right here on MSNBC. <laughs> uh, let's get right to our first rep. Upward traje trajectory of any king. Donald Trump, because he totally... Un ...was the first thing Democrats did, which was to hold to stick to their guns on the shutdown. They inherited a shutdown. They, they came into the government with a shutdown. There was tremendous, it's actually really important to sort of set a tone, I think, for all of the sort of back and forth yeah. relationship. And I think- Rosa. It's gotta go need more African-American women to- Susan. Um, I went to Speaker Pelosi's finger very action. well. Yes, yeah, she <laughs> But she's uh, been able to do that very well and, and take flack from some of the, her own caucus and which shows leadership. You've got right. to be able to do that. I think that uh, that's, uh, both of you make a good point. And you know, as I was youth director, we're Manigault Newman. Uh, next up, the best speech of the year. Several come to mind, including late Congressman Elijah Cummings. Susan. When I saw this category, immediately one line agree with that. In fact, I have to confess that I had my students at Howard Joy uh, watch her announcement speech so that they could know what it's like to come from Howard University and end up. Fantastic speech. It was a fantastic speech that encouraged those young men to pay it forward. But it also reminded us of the political issue of college debt and how they're. It dramatically brought that point home. Yeah. Chris Hayes. So in domestic politics, I would say the Elijah Cummings speech, uh, a combination of what he said, the moment, the fact that it was X a year ago has been able to kind of coalesce this global movement. No, she was, she really made a mark and very good orator. Yeah. I mean, you, you'd only have to wonder what the future holds for her. And I, I agree with you, Kamala's speech was inspiring. Yeah. And uh, uh, Miss C, we used to call Chisholm Miss C, was very meticulous about her speech and mm. you perfect. Yeah. I don't use that word. And I told Kamala, Kamala loved uh, the Shirley Chisholm stories. We have a lot more. You know, I, I would have to agree with you, but a close second is Mick Mulvaney when he stood up there and told us all to just get over it. Yes, politics influences foreign policy. And in this case, yes, we did make these demands. He basically. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, that was a good one. Uh, I went with uh, Press Secretary Stephanie. And you stand there with that blueberry pie on your face. <laughs> okay, since Trump. Susan Del Precio, Chris Hayes, and Omarosa Manor. Gold Newman. Our next category. I mean, uh, it, it's, it's so many, and I didn't even use the ones he did on Joy Reid and I. I mean, I'm, <laughs> it's on and on and on. Uh, or mine. Oh, I wasn't even going <laughs> to bring. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring yours. Thank you. I, I, you notice I didn't even put you in our list of the Thank departed. You. Thank you. I'm trying to be kind. You know what I think? You know what's strange? It's my end of the year, my, New Year's. Thing. There you go. My, by the way, the one one that I would include in there uh, again because of the context is 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 calling the district of Elijah Cummings uh, rat yeah. infested. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's just it, a disgusting racist trope. It's a disgusting racist trope. Here, countries which states his state of mind right. about people of color that he thinks they don't belong here. Um, there's the one attacking in real time and countries run by non-white people. Remember his obsession. To this, and in his mind, that brought the United States down. He can't get over the existence of Barack Obama for one second. Off camera, he accepted when he used to play. He was a Democrat and come to a lot of functions, yeah. even my Nash Action Network convention. He can accept you in the role of entertainer yes. right. or athlete. Yeah. Yes, Susan. <laughs> well, you touched on it earlier. I say Greenland. The fact that the president actually woke up and said, I want to buy... Um, I, I go with the Sharpie moment. And the reason is not just... It's not just the first tweet where he said, you know, Alabama, look out. It's it's the excessive doubling down. There's a comedy sketch. He inspected it before he said it. Which, by the way, <laughs> let's just be clear about those Big Macs. They're cold, They're okay? Cold. They got assembled somewhere, then they got yeah. run over, then they had to go through security. That's this right. was like during the shutdown, so it's right. like winter. And then they're sitting in a big room that I have been in the White House, which oh, is yeah, not yeah. that warm because yeah. it's like a big old. It's oh, they're just sitting I've there gelatinous. And not very sanitary. And not <laughs> silver plate. And you know, it's not like he said who thought it is. And he, was surprised. <laughs> he actually inspected it. I mean, it's amazing. That's all he eats. It's true. It's what he lives on. He's full of Big Mac. I don't think he eats anything else. He's yeah, well, and but, diet but I mean, the, the fact that we're laughing, we should be also crying. Because some of the ridiculous stuff, when we think of uh, what this country has had,
to tolerate, uh, tolerate. And, and the thing that, that really scares you is the normalizing That's of right. people mm -hmm. looking at push saying it's pull. <laughs> and we're beginning to see Americans act like this is normal. When you have the president sitting up there choppy more than looking at the weather, we have a problem. Well, well, you just had a, a book by Peter Bergen just is just just come out about the presence and, and North Korea uh, during the sort of fire and fury moments, which right. I think you were probably in the White House during that period of time, uh, saying, reporting the president actually t instructed U.S. families of military personnel to be evacuated from yeah. Seoul and from the Korean Peninsula. Now, that was a ridiculous... Let us go to Chris Hayes. So I'm going to make a prediction that I feel pretty good about, uh, that the 2020 presidential election will be the highest turnout election ever. I think, I think in, in raw vote. She says if I'm <laughs> drafted, I will it. Match <laughs> Who needs it? Joy? I think that it's, I think you're right. Omar Rosa said that I think whoever the, the Democratic nominee is will pick a black woman. Police officer, but she's very popular. She and her husband, who's the current um, sheriff, she, he took over from. Susan. Um, well, I do believe Donald Trump will be acquitted by the Senate. Um, oh. I say zero. Yeah, Maybe there. zero. No Republicans. You, no. you say zero. Republicans. I say zero. So you think one. every Republican in the Senate trial votes to acquit? Yes. There's one possibility that won't, and that's Cory Gardner, who's in deep, deep trouble in Colorado. Which means I'm not sure can. he can get re. He might be the one if one does. Maybe Mitt Romney will be tempted, but I still would be very shocked if any you of them. You see, I think if you have Corey, then you get one. You might it's, get one. Right. I think it is true that they were all. If, if anyone's going to do it, they're in a better position if it's four than one. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that is true. That's right. One right. won't do it. Right. But if one a group, won't. I don't think one yeah. will. No. Yeah. You, you were there in the White House, Omarosa. Mm -hmm. uh, for at being president. We haven't talked about uh, your favorite mayor of New York, Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> Bill does supervise the Southern District of New York, so we'll see if he interrupts it. But yeah, Ru Rudolph Giuliani, those of us who lived under him as mayor, this is huge karma and comeuppance for somebody who was a threat uh, to me. I felt threatened being black in this city when he was mayor, um, and he made us, made it very clear he was not our mayor and that he was only the mayor of the people he chose to lead, which was white uh, New Yorkers. And so it is quite an interesting and, 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 and sort of delicious irony that he now finds. He took the, the fame and the adulation he got out of 9-11 and went... Hey, just, oh, no! Why'd you come to me first? <laughs> uh, uh, you right. know, Matt, I think okay. it's going to be Biden, no yeah, question. Yeah, I think it's most Biden. likely Biden. No idea. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I have no idea. Warren's still out there. I mean, Elizabeth Warren has, I mean, but it's it's looking Biden-ish, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Biden. So you think it's Biden? It's Biden-ish? No idea, because Chris knows I'm going to save the tape. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Susan. Well, that does it for us here. Wait, you have to tell us. You have to tell us Brad. who's going to be the number. I'm not running. I'm not running. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for being with us for the Revenue Award. Joy, Susan, Chris, and Omarosa, you've all been terrific. We've got to go, so...